I've been coaching 26 years, and I'm here to tell you about a very troubling trend that I've witnessed for about the last 20 years since I left the farm. When I came to suburbia, I realized that more and more kids are beginning to specialize in just one activity, and I consider that to be madness. So I'm here to talk to you today about what we can do to change that. So my goal is to have a more informed discussion with parents, coaches, administrators, and kids about the virtues of doing multiple activities just for fun. Please read that quote. I'm going to tell you some things that you are not going to agree with. It's gonna challenge your way of thinking, and you might be upset with me, but I hope you'll at least keep an open mind as I go through the presentation. Now, I, I tell all these kids, I'm a teacher, right? So I tell all the kids to identify the bias of the author, and uh, you need to do the same thing so you understand why I'm here and what brought me here. So you can see I'm a small town kid, multiple sport athlete, jack of all trades, master of none. I've been coach coaching 26 years. I've coached wrestling, baseball, cross country, track and field, and tennis. I've taught kids in a rural environment, inner city, mountain, and suburban environments. I'm a husband and father of three, and I'm a teacher. And I'm a teacher first. I'm committed to lifelong fitness, and mental health. Now this is from a famous coach, a Duke basketball coach. Sports is an opportunity to learn a lot about people. It's not a just about base shooting a ball or a basketball, it's about learning how to live with people, how to succeed with them, how to fail with them. We're robbing kids of the opportunity by just doing one sport. And you can see here, I didn't realize I was abnormal <laughs> until I came here. And uh, you can see the color one, the purple one, were the only ones that my mom insisted that I do. She didn't want me to drown, so she taught me to swim. And I grew up with horses, so I had to learn how to ride horses. Other than that, every single one of those things on that screen, and you can see when I learned how to do those things, every single one of them, I chose myself. I chose it because I had fun, and I had friends, and those friends got me through hard times as a kid. I hope everyone in this auditorium will read this book. I thought it was about sports, but it turns out it's about life, it's about business, it's about science. Daniel Epstein, Why Generalists Triumph in a Specialized World. And you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about today. The first thing that I was just stunned with when I came here, I grew up in northern Illinois on a farm, and then my wife and I traveled to suburban Denver, and when I got here, I realized that the seasonal sports model was gone. I grew up doing four sports, at least four sports, and we went about three months and then we switched to the next sport, right? We never did it to get a college scholarship that wasn't even something that we were thinking of. Balance is not something you find, it's something you create. Does it make sense to you to take a 15-year-old little girl and run her so much that her tibia breaks? Does it make sense to you that you take a 15-year-old little girl and run her so much that she loses her period? Does it make sense to you that you take a little girl and run her so much that she becomes so anemic that oxygen doesn't get to her muscles? Does that seem normal to you? It doesn't to me. But that's the model that we have. It wins. It makes that girl very fast for a period of time. But eventually nature's gonna catch up and we'll take that little girl and we'll discard her and we'll find another one. Burnout. Every single one of the kids tell us this and we're not listening. Does it make sense for a kid to be burned out doing something fun? Maybe if we would rotate activities, it would reduce the burnout that the kids are feeling. Hoarding of great athletes. You may have seen that guy before. His name's Tom Brady. I hear he's a good football player. There's another one named Patrick Mahomes who's about to play in the Super Bowl. And uh, do you think anybody told Tom Brady that he shouldn't play basketball? That it would affect his football career? Did anybody tell Tom Brady, don't play baseball? It'll affect your football career? He was drafted in two sports. Why are we hoarding these great athletes? Let them play. The miracle is this. The more we have, the more we share, the more we have. 
And as a coach, too many coaches, it's the sandbox, sandbox metaphor. Every one of the coaches is so concerned with their little sandbox that we can't see the other sandboxes. So we got softball sandbox, we got a cross country sandbox, we got a football sandbox, and we don't look up from our sandbox to see what the kids are doing. And as a result, we are not sharing these great kids. So I just think that we should say nice things about other programs, sports, coaches, model what it looks like. Encourage your best player to try another sport. Walk him to first day of practice, just like you take your little kid to kindergarten, right? And then be there for that kid when he fails. He will fail. That's the uh, head coach for UConn, and he speaks very eloquently about that. Selfish athlete syndrome. I would encourage you to go to YouTube and see what coach has to say about that. This is probably the greatest sadness that I have, is that we are not encouraging failure. We are not supporting these kids to fail in a supportive environment. Okay, That's Michael Jordan, right? You've heard of him. I can accept failure. Everyone fails at something but I can't accept not trying. Okay, and when you coach a sport where you have to beg kids to come out, they're just afraid of failing. And they're afraid of failing in front of lots of people. And as a result, they don't want to fail. They won't do it. And then usually sophomore, junior year, these kids who have participated in only one thing in their life realize that they're actually not that good at that one thing. Not as good as everybody thought, not as good as they thought. And then they don't know how to handle it. And the greatest sin is the kids don't even know the missed experiences that they've had. And it's very hard to get them to do other activities at that point. They thought they were good enough. And this is straight from the NCAA website. And I always knew I wasn't good enough, and all my friends knew that we weren't good enough, and so that's not why we played these sports. But today that seems to change in this community, and it's very perplexing because you can see the numbers. Straight from the NCAA website. The numbers have not changed. In fact, they've gotten worse. Okay, you have about a 6% chance, and that's on the high end, of participating in Division I or II sports. Participating, not even getting a scholarship. The scholarship is less than 2%. And of those 2%, very few are getting a full ride. Those coaches will take those scholarships and slice them razor thin down to 25%, which is going to be very important when you see the future numbers here. And it's happening in our district. It's happening in this building. It's happening in Ranchfield. The three-sport athlete is a dinosaur today, okay? Used to be the norm, certainly at least a two-sport athlete. And I didn't realize this because I coached middle school wrestling for eight years. It's starting in elementary school. By the time the kids get to seventh grade, they've already made their decision on that one activity, okay? Look at those numbers. Nobody uh, thinks about what it does to the coach, though. So as a three-sport coach for 20-plus years, that's kind of a picture of me over there. At the end of every season, I have to recharge. And uh, just like any battery, right, it's harder to get to the recharge level. And we are losing coaches, and there's no one to replace us. If you ask any athletic director, what's the problem? The first thing they'll say is, parents, I got a slide on you. Second thing they'll say is they can't get enough coaches, okay? And when you have a whole generation of coaches who have only played one sport, you wonder why they can't coach multiple sports. And that's what we're seeing, and that's what I'm feeling. And uh, it's almost become uh, like running a college program, doing a 5A sport here in Colorado. It's causing huge attrition problems. What's the cost to the coaches? And this is something that comes straight out of range. We're supposed to be teaching these kids that they're supposed to acquire skills, right? Just like scaffolding. And when you acquire those skills, you can take those skills into business, right? And to succeed in business, you need different skills, don't you? Can you just have one skill? I don't think that's going to get you very far. And you can see the business model. People are having to go through all those different levels to get to the top, just to have a chance to compete in business. And I don't think we're preparing kids for that when we allow them to just do one activity, right? And we're not giving these kids skills to solve problems. You know, I know wrestling, right? And if you only hang out with wrestlers, wrestlers <laughs> solve problems a very particular way, and uh, sometimes that's not the best way. So we need to give those kids a chance to see how other people, other sports, other activities 
solve problems. And is that what we're after? It feels like it in Colorado sometimes, I'll tell you. I know it gets trophies, but uh, I don't think that's the most important thing. And that's, uh, of course, Lance Armstrong got in a little trouble because of this quest to win at all costs. And I don't think that's what business wants. Business wants teammates, right? This one, um, I just couldn't believe it when I came here. I started talking to the kids. I realized that they were doing club sports, and I said, okay, you know, I was in sports. I did park district, things like that. (laughs) And then I realized, they're like, no, no, Mr. Paisley, Uh, you know, this is a club sport. The average, and I've asked all these kids in my class, you're talking about $7,000 a year, depending on travel. I actually have one kid tell me $25,000. I almost fainted. And now when you see the figures in the next one, it's, of course, the elephant in the room. Nobody wants to talk about this, and everybody gets angry as soon as I bring this up, why they're doing this. You're talking, I I mean, I think you can run the numbers on this, 10 to 12 years in club sports at $7,000 a year, and you're after this for a 2% chance of a college scholarship? I just couldn't even believe that. I still can't believe it as I look at the screen. Do you really think that you are among the 2%. That's, a, that's not a very good bet, I don't think. Especially when you look at the numbers that you've just put into that system. Now this is, uh, I loved baseball, right? And uh, I couldn't even afford to put my own kids in baseball. And we knew that early on. Two kids, uh, two boys, one would have played softball, and you look at that times seven, right? Or times three, seven times three, you're talking $21,000 a year to put your three kids in club, baseball, or softball. And it made me think, and there's a Bryant Gumbel episode about this on YouTube, I'll show you in a little bit. What has it done to the number of participants in baseball, volleyball, soccer, tennis? Used to be cheap sports, right? Used to be. Now, I thought about this too. You know how kids change? You know how their bodies change? Does it make sense to take an 8-year-old and a 10-year-old and put them in a particular sport? Have you ever seen a 100-pound lineman offensive lineman in the NFL? Have you ever seen a 300-pound distance runner? I don't think so, right? So does it make sense to take that kid at 10 years old and say, this is going to be your sport, and then watch what happens when that kid's body changes? They're going to go through anemia. They're going to go through the loss of a period. They're going to go through bone density problems. They're going to go through obesity, anorexia, OCD, CTE, and general body issues. And then what happens afterwards? Do we just cast them aside? I think so. This one really upset me. Look at that. Do you want your kids to be with the same type of person, the same type of people? Or do you want to be with different types of people, right? Everybody says that, but we're not doing it. We're not doing it in practice. And they go through the same type of thing, the same people, the same coaches for 12 years, and then it's over. I'm not surprised. Uh, That's a picture from this last summer in Lakewood, Colorado at a Little League baseball game. A 13-year-old umpire lost control of the parents, and the parents stormed the field and began punching each other. Right? Right? You all remember this. You've seen it. Those are three documentaries I'd like you all to watch if you want to be really horrified. The potential for child-parent-coach conflict is extreme, and it gets worse every single year. Some, I think many, parents simply cannot control themselves at games, matches, and now practice. Guess who's coming to practice? Never thought I'd see that. I don't know why we can't find officials. That's probably the third concern for athletic directors. Have you ever been to a football game, a basketball game, a baseball game lately? Have you ever heard those parents? They're screaming at the referees. They're screaming at the coaches. They're screaming at the coaches. And they're screaming at the kids. Is that helping? This was last week. North Carolina, a father runs out of the bleachers and tackles his son's opponent. Arrested and charged with assault. I've seen it multiple times. 
I love NPR and CPR and all my students do too. And this is a special episode of Teens Under Stress. The second leading cause of death for teenagers is suicide. And this series goes in and listens to kids and the kids are telling us and we're not listening. So I'd urge you to go check out Teens Under Stress. It's the overscheduled athlete. Okay, why are we doing morning workouts? Why are we doing eight workouts a week? Because they're out there, I assure you. Just because you can do this, why are you doing this? Why are these coaching ske- coaches scheduling these practices? Why are we taking up your vacations? Why aren't you asking those questions? And why are the coaches doing it? Add all this to the cocktail of what's called open enrollment. I never thought I would see this, but open enrollment is where a kid can go to any school in the district based on the sport that they're good at. So what do you think's going to happen? What do you think that's going to do to the relationship with the coach, the coach that taught them how to play that sport? And then they pick up before their eighth grade year, May 1st of the eighth grade year, the coaches can contact those kids. This is something you would think about, you know, for a college recruit. No, this is an eighth grader. And then you can encourage those kids after May 1st to come to your program. And they're doing that. I can't imagine why we're having problems. Now, have I convinced you that there's a problem? Is there at least one slide that you would agree with me that there's a problem? What do we do? So I I try not to be negative all the time, right? So I thought I would just share this with you. We are supposed to encourage fitness, right? 20 minutes a day is all it takes. So if these kids, and we get a lot of kids out there who are afraid to go out for a sport because they're going to be made fun of, because they're not fit. But we could help them with that, couldn't we, in a kind, supportive environment. Just go for a run. Go for a lift. Just move with your friends. Cheer on a different sport or activity, right? Do you know anything about swimming? Do you know anything about baseball? Do you know anything about gymnastics, right? Lacrosse, field hockey? Pick a sport and go watch it. Look up the background of your favorite athlete or performer. You would be surprised. I looked up Tom Brady, right? I had a a sense, but I, I wasn't surprised on that one. When was the last time you did something for the first time? Right? Mental health experts are telling us how important that is. And we're not listening. Just talk about it. Don't get defensive. Every time I bring this up in the community, they shout me down, right? Every time I go to a club program, they shout me down. They can't even talk about this stuff objectively because they're too deep into it. Encourage local school and program loyalty. We have youth feeder programs that are seasonal, by the way, and of course, some of those kids are picking up and leaving and going to a more competitive program that's gonna win a, a, a championship. How does that make that coach feel who started them in that sport when they were six. How about this? Do you know we have no-cut sports? We have no-cut sports. Give it a try. Don't support a program who uh, won't allow your family to have time to their family. Stop supporting the 11-month calendar. Beware of false promises and tactics. Have an honest talk with your kids. Prepare your kids for job changes. Prepare them for new, learning new things their whole lives and prepare them to seek failure. Moderation in all things but love. Coaches are tired. Would you please help us? Thank you.